I don't want to bore you with the unboxing part, but each part is individually packaged in bubble wrap. Very good packaging, nothing should happen. plate that connects to the nose part can be screwed in. So no need to glue this together. This thing here has magnets in it. Center cable tray here. So the DJI O3 cable goes down there and plenty of space for batteries and for achieving proper CG. With two 1300 Ma 6S packs. So those are really common in having a lot of drones. These are the two additional parts. An alternative canopy for Gimbal style installation, FPV cockpit style, stock nose. And even if you don't have a lot of components, it gives you plenty room to separate for lesser interference. The control surface configuration, you actually have two choices. On the original Dolphin, we just had a delta configuration. The ailerons were also elevons. Now that we have a V-tail, we can use this as elevator. So this can be mixed to go up and down or left and right. Like I saw today, Olivier C, and this guy knows a thing or two about flying. Oliver just uses the elevons, like on the older Dolphin, and uses this exclusively for yaw. The way it comes pre-configured, this is an elevator. So I might stick with this. Or we can go crazy and use these as elevons and this additionally as elevator to have extra <laughs> maneuverability spoiler runs and give negative there yeah so much options here hope this doesn't lead into a crash uh, for the first flights i will stay quite conventional my motor is two centimeters more in the back than the original mount you can download this 3d printed motor mount extender but note that you need 30 mil m3 screws for this then this was a tip from my friend. This should help with not being as noisy. Because if the prop is too close to the plane, you will have turbulent air, dirty air, loud, inefficient. So this is supposed to be better. And with those two 1300 Ma packs, 1.4 kilos, without batteries, but everything else like DJI O3, 959 grams. The original Dolphin up there, half a kilo, so I can fly this forever and this will fly fast and not forever. Test flight time, I'm nervous. 711 INAV version that ATOMRC supplied. I pretty much also use just their stock configuration, auto launch for the win. Just send it. Wish me luck. <laughs> yes. And I got the process overheat already. But we are flying. Oh, and it flies. And it flies weird. But the overheat message is gone. That's good. Should maybe do an auto tune. So the elevator authority is of course good. Got 140 kph. Going to manual. Whoa! Manual rates are insane. Oh. Going to Acro again. Oh, it's a bit weird. I will be so happy. Oh, that was a hard landing. Oh, I'm sweaty. And what is with this shitty ear, Larry? It is so loud. 
gonna fetch the plane. Give me a breath. Oh, what the fuck? Have you seen it? <laughs> no. I probably lost it and flying inverted. And this could have caused some issues. <laughs> and since the flight controller bay lid disappeared mid-air, I used these magic balls and the uh, Quality Raptor scanner to create a 3D model of the hull. And now I can make my own lid. In the description of this video will be a link. Nice. And way easier than I anticipated. And look at the result. It now looks like black mahogany wood in the best case. No. It's a bit heavy. It's 83 grams. This might be 10 or 20 grams. I printed it with a lot of support, like this much support, 15% infill, maybe even less, five wall loops, four shell and four bottom covers. Shell covers I would keep because otherwise you get nasty artifacts. Bottom covers maybe less, I don't know, or else just buy the damn replacement part. Okay, let's make a really quick run through the config. As you see, it's configured with for servos. That's how it came set up. We have serial on UART 2, GPS on UART 4 and O3 is on UART 5. In the configuration I actually have to set this. There's this formula of mass scale. Yeah, it's here and I should go to 170. Permanently enable air mode and permanently launch mode. Auto trim always. On failsafe it will return to home. The PIDs, I didn't touch them. These are the auto launch settings. 30% of idle throttle, max throw angle to 90. Launch throttle, this means 75%. 18 degrees okay, could be steeper, but 18 degree. It launches for 10 seconds with no altitude limit and it has a 3 second end transition time. Return to home at least and 100 meters. It's a crossfire receiver. Manual. Acro mode. Acro. Acro is if it's not in any of the other ranges. So manual, acro angle and mode. angle mode. And I have cruise and loiter. Return to home on a switch. Auto tune on a switch. Loiter direction change. That's just a gag. And beeper is the same as return to home channel. OSD setup is totally your preference, but that's my that's my setup that I like. Yeah, and I think that's it. And once you change something and happy with it. Always do a diff, diff all and save. Let's head to the flying field a third time to get more action in.
we can compare the mojito without its tail, but it's an impressive beast, with the Dolphin Pro. And I thought this, this thing is pro, but this is really this is really another thing. Very sleekly designed. But frightening to me. What do you think? How much of you guys actually fly the mojito already? I mean it's a 6S or 8S beast. Not flying today, though. No. Doesn't have a flight controller yet. This one is easier. This is a plug and play route and that's what I go for. <laughs> give you my direct impressions after the second flight. First flight was two days ago. Weird, I had a few things going on so this time I was way more relaxed. Initially in acro mode it flew quite dumped down because it only had like 100 degree per second. I increased the roll to 200 degree per second, pitch from 200 to 300 degree and the yaw a bit more. So these are pretty the good settings for my taste. Manual mode is just full deflection of all control surfaces and quite extreme. But I don't like too much about V-tails in general and about this one as well. If you give full up elevator, can go into a stall or make just weird rolls and feel unstable and might even spiral to death. I'm a bit cautious about V-tails and doing extreme maneuvers. And for this we could also debate uh, if we go back to the Delta Mix and just forget about the yaw servers. 2600 Ma of lipo power. I adjusted the Ma scale. I'm not sure if I'm correct, but in 11 minutes I used 1200 milliamps. That would be not bad. The O3 almost overheated again in the front, so it gets quite hot. Even though I have this cooling top plate that you can get from iFlight. So you might want to install an active fan there. During flight I, I was tempted to think that the old one flew better, but I'm totally used to the old one flying as it is. But in this kind of windy or gusty conditions the old one wouldn't have been as much fun as this one probably. So. The more weight and the beefier control surfaces and the stiffer airframe, I think it's better for uh, dives. For a short time I did a dive over there on the opposing hill. And it was quite fun to go like 130 to 150. It still it didn't shake crazy, it felt controllable. And I was confident enough about those control linkages because they, they are short and they don't bend. All the force on a high-speed dive can be handled by this plane. This is maybe where the Pro comes from. It's a heavier, more capable fighter jet. Do you think about the look? The fuselage is now a bit fatter. I like that we have lights, that the strobe lights are really cool. Don't have negative winglets, but these wing fences. So that gives it a cleaner look and for sure this will not be broken as easy as the old Dolphin. The way the camera is mounted is like with minimal air profile. So it doesn't affect the flying capabilities too much. I have this flyway antenna, which is a dual antenna for O3. Yeah, but I, I hope this will get my number one FPV plane for all the meetings. One recommendation, use auto launch. I will post you my auto launch settings here now. You can pause the video. They really work. Don't, don't use 100% on the auto launch throttle value because too much throttle will also give you torque roll to death because the control surfaces don't work at low speeds yet. 75% with the stock motor, with the stock 8x4 prop and with LiPo power, that's important, 6S LiPos, is good. It's not overkill, it's not overpowered, but it's good to start in 18 degrees of angle. 30% as the idle throttle, so that you, when you arm it and, and enable auto launch, you already have 30% of throttle. This way when you throw it, it already has a bit of forward momentum and it helps you guide the plane to a good throw. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time. Bye for now.